everybody has crushes, but I did. Yet, when I was a kid, I never once saw a story about the kind of crushes that I had. I didn't even know someone like me could exist, and that was kind of awful. So, I wrote a story called Love, Violet, just for you. Love, Violet, words by Charlotte Sullivan Wilde, pictures by Charlene Chua. As far as Violet was concerned, only one person in her class raced like the wind. Only one had a leaping laugh. Only one made Violet's heart skip. Mira. My first crush was when I was eight or nine years old. It's probably first grade. I was about five or six years old and in first grade. I was nine at the first time I had a crush on someone for real. Preschool and kindergarten. My first crush, or at least the first one I can remember, was on Sid Charisse when I saw her performing and singing in the rain. Every day, Violet dreamed of astounding Mira with heroic feats and bringing her treasures and galloping off together on adventures. I felt like I was made of glitter. I remember feeling awe and a bit of confusion that someone that beautiful and graceful could be living on the same planet that I was living on. I know that I you know, suddenly like this person and, and wanted to like, you know, hug them or something. And um, you know, it, it, we never had a tradition of like giving Valentines to one another because I grew up in Singapore. And uh, so I never got to give this person a Valentine. But um, you know, if I, if I had, I, I probably would. I, I just remember, the, the thing I remember most about we'll call him Brad, to protect his innocence, um, was that I just always had this desire to be around him. We were a couple nerds uh, who didn't like sports like all the other boys in our class did. We both liked Star Wars, um, and we just really got along. And he laughed at my jokes. Um, it felt like I was just boiling up with love every time she was near me. And the world felt softer, and it felt safer. It was a very nervous energy. Every time we were in the same room together, uh, it just felt like there was electricity between us. I think my heart was always racing. But whenever Mira came near, Violet went shy. We were friends, and our whole class had to sit at one table during lunch, so we sat next to each other. One day, I accidentally asked him to marry me, and it was so embarrassing. Lots of kids at the lunch table laughed, and he was like, what? Almost every detail in a story is inspired by something that I, or people I know, experienced when we were kids. From Violet's fantasy adventures to making a valentine, the heart pounding whenever they walk in the room. Also, completely embarrassing yourself. Yes, that's real. That's also love. <laughs> Hi, my name is Shaolin Chua. I'm the illustrator of Love, Violet, and I'm just here to talk to you a bit about the book today. It's a very special story about a girl that wants to give another girl a, a valentine. And I felt like I would like to really be part of this book. Essentially, it's a story about love and you know, having butterflies in your stomach and you know wondering what the other person uh, thinks about you uh, and you know I wanted to bring that aspect of 
love across in the book. I really wanted Love, Violet to capture all those big feelings of love. And winter was the perfect setting for me. It's so magical with all the glittery snow, the wind whooshing through. It's overwhelming. It's wonderful. You slip and fall. It's how love feels. Winter is like love. This is a very early piece, so it is a test. So you can see that Violet and Violet and Mira don't really look the way they, they are in the actual book. Um, but I kind of settled on this color palette of, uh, it takes place in the winter. So a lot of white with, uh, you know, kind of sunset, sunrise skies, very washy and very loose and messy, which is uh, actually something that's a little bit different from what I normally do. I love this art. The colors are so warm and romantic. Even though you also feel the gusts, the chill of the snow on your cheeks. The pictures really capture that intensity of new love and the uncertainty of it all. There's movement, a sort of whooshing that goes through every spread. And I really think it helps us to feel all of Violet's adventures, all the ups and the downs and the changing moods. And when everything suddenly goes still, wow, we feel it. This art is very emotional and it's so beautiful. I did want to bring across that aspect of um, looseness and things being like messy and organic because that's how I think love is. It's not something that you're sure about and it's not something that's set in stone and it is messy. Um, but in that mess, there is a lot of like beauty that comes from happy mistakes. That's kind of my contribution to it. To stay in the right mood to work on the story, which I did over a long period of time, I listened to the soundtrack of Shakespeare in Love over and over. And the music has this dramatic, pulsing heartbeat. Sometimes it's sweeping and wonderful, like falling in love, and sometimes it's stormy or timid, or it's forlorn and lonely when everything seems hopeless. It, it was just all the feelings in this book. It was so perfect. Only later did I realize that the music had actually slipped into the story. Every time Violet sees Mira, we hear her heart thumpity, thumpity, thumpity. That is the music of love. I really wanted to channel my own feelings of love into the emotional look of the book. And so I actually made a uh, playlist of music that I, mm, that gets me right rather emotional. <laughs> but listening to that soundtrack over and over uh, for the month or so that uh, I worked on the final art painting for the book um, did kind of put me into a strange um, emotional state. We tend to build walls to prevent ourselves from feeling the highs and lows of what we've experienced and to you know constantly expose oneself you know, put oneself into a vulnerable position for a prolonged period of time. It does make it somewhat challenging and I'm glad that you know I have a supportive spouse. I can say that the emotions that went to this book were like quite genuine um, and it's probably the most emotional book that I've worked on. So my favorite image in the book is actually this one. This is the original painting, it's not the final version that's in the book. Uh, but in this spread, Violet is walking up to school and she's wondering about how she can give Mira the uh, valentine. The scene that has always felt the most personal for me is when Violet is about to give Mira her surprise. It's hidden in her hat. 
she's kind of lost in her thoughts and and then Mira comes running up to her and is like hi Marilyn and uh, you know she's like totally lost in her thoughts so she's like kind of caught off guard and her expression is kind of like in the middle of like being happy to see Mira but also kind of like like oh no I'm not ready there <laughs> like and, and I think we've all been uh, caught in such situations where you're happy to see somebody but you're not quite sure what to say or do in, in that moment and um, I just like the the interplay between uh, the two girls. Of all the moments this was the hardest one to get right. It took me really years. I mean how do you put how love feels into words? The amazement, the terror, the joy, everything all at once, the embarrassment. <laughs> Just then, Mira raced up like the wind. Nice hat, Violet. Snow sparkled on Mira's eyelashes. Mira was magnificent. But what if Violet's Valentine wasn't? Suddenly, Violet's heart thundered like a hundred galloping horses. She reached for her hat and thumpity, thumpity, thumpity. That's how I felt when my Mira walked into the classroom. I'll never forget it. This story took a lot of drafts. I know, like love, sometimes we make a lot of mistakes and we have to keep working at it. When I started it, I was pretty new at writing picture books. And anything new takes longer and is usually messier. Think about learning how to read, how long it takes to sound out every word. That's kind of how writing Love Violet was for me. But also, when I was little, I didn't get to talk about my crushes. I didn't get to really feel them. I hid how I felt, even from myself. So as an adult, when I tried to write Violet's feelings, I kept leaving them out. So finally, I made a giant storyboard with a box for every spread. And next to my words, and a little sketch, I put a sticky note and I wrote down everything that Violet was thinking and feeling in that moment in the story. That practice of asking myself, okay, what's Violet feeling? What's she thinking here? That really helped me get what was locked inside of Violet and me out and into the story and into the world. long time, book publishers said kids didn't need books about crushes, especially not about a girl who has a crush on a girl. But that's who I was as a kid. But my agent and I kept sending Love Violet to more publishers, and they kept saying no. Finally, we stopped sending it out for several years. And that whole time, I just kept thinking about all the kids out there who needed a story like this one, just like I had. So I couldn't give up on Love, Violet. Not yet. I didn't know that being gay was an option, really, until I was 12. So looking back, I feel like I probably did have a lot of crushes on girls as a kid. But at the time, I certainly never put those into words. I think that if Love, Violet had been out when I was a kid, I probably would have figured it out a lot sooner. Because I think I would have been more understanding about how I was feeling. It's hard to put into words how you feel when you don't have the words for it or when you're told that's not an option. I remember being attracted to people of my same gender way back when I was in early elementary school. Sometimes it was scary because I never saw any examples of other people who felt the same way that I did. If I had found a book like Love, Violet, 
you would have made me feel a lot less alone and a lot less afraid. I don't think I realized it when I was writing Love, Violet, but the way Violet feels, how Violet is so afraid Mira won't like her, or maybe she isn't somehow good enough, that was kind of how I felt when I was worried people wouldn't like me because I like girls. When I was ready to talk about it, there were some people who were very upset, and that was hard, especially at first. But there were also people who loved me the same, maybe even more, for being honest with them. But the best thing was realizing that no matter what anybody else said or did, I was who I was supposed to be, and I was okay. So I'm very proud to be part of Love Violet. Uh, from what I know, it's the first picture book to show two little girls in love. And to be honest, I, I don't know why it's taken this long. It being a first, I'm very happy to be part of it. Um, I hope that it helps children to see that whether they're queer or BIPOC or featuring disabilities, that love is love. You know what else happened? On a snowy, wintry day, I met someone in an adorable cat, and she made me homemade valentines, and we fell in love, and now we've been a family for a long time. I had no idea that was even possible way back when I had my first crush. And that's why I wrote Love, Violet. And now, after so many messy, messy giraffes, and so many no's, and 10 years, yes, 10 years of waiting, Love Violet is finally here. And now there is a story about the kinds of crushes so many of us had, and a story about Violet realizing that she is lovable just like you. If I could tell my younger self anything about love, it would probably be not to be afraid of your feelings, that love is love, and you should learn how to dance. The thing about telling people your feelings is you have to accept what might come back. You, it might be a negative answer. Um, they might not like you the same way that you like them. And that's 100% fine. You need to be prepared to ask the question. But you also need to be prepared for the answer. I would tell my younger self to ask the question more often. Because the risk is well worth it. Don't rush yourself, but don't hide yourself. And don't hide from yourself. I don't think a single day has ever gone by where I haven't wanted to go back in time and find my young self and just kind of give him a hug and say, you're going to get there. Um, and when you do, you're going to love it. It's going to be amazing. Um, you're going to find people who accept you and the ones who don't, don't matter, and they never will. <laughs> um, but there's, there's so much great about accepting yourself and something freeing in being able to love who you want. It's okay to love whoever you love, and it's okay if who you love changes as you get older. It's also totally okay if you're not ready to share your feelings with others. It's really amazing when you can be your true self, because you are important and you matter. If I could go back in time and talk to myself when I was young, I would say, David, it's going to be okay. You will grow up and you will be able to love whoever you want. And there will always be people who will support you 
and love you just the way that you are. Because that's exactly what happened. If I could tell my young self anything, it would be the same thing that I would tell Violet and that I would tell you. You are lovable exactly the way you are. And if you dare to share your heart, even when it's pounding, you might just find a happy ending. Love, Violet, a valentine for you. Learn more at charlottesswild.com. Love.